Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking this time out to listen. We are in Jude chapter 1, continuing, and we are in verse 17, and we're going to close it out today. I hope that you have been enlightened thus far. We have gotten into many things dealing with those who are trying to move believers away from God. Okay. Verse 17 reads, but dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. Let's stop right there. Let's stop at verse 18. They are going to follow their own ungodly desires. Those individuals who tell you one thing, but do another. It sounds good, but he's not really a believer. Well, that's all the more reason to be guarded. Well, you know, she told me some things, but I don't see much fruit on her tree. That's all the more reason to be guarded. You see, these false teachers are not so much worried about those that are unbelievers, you know, uh, apostates, wavered in the faith. Uh, uh, they're after the Christians. They're after the Christians. Because they stand to gain something from the Christian's anointing, from the Christian's money, from the Christian's power, from the Christian's fame, from whatever it is that God has so richly bestowed upon them. And when they see the man manifestations of the spirit going on with the Christian, woo, antennas go off. And so what can we do in order to get this Christian to follow after what we are trying to do? We've got to devise a plan that is going to turn them away from God and cause them to look at us, the group, as gods. People who fall into cults, that's what happens. The group was there for me when mama wasn't. The group was there when, uh, you know, I needed money. The group was there when I needed a roof over my head. The group was there to feed my children. And the group is also there to lead you astray from God. But they say God, but are they really preaching God? Well, they say Holy Spirit. Well, are they really praying? You see? Are they really praying and, and putting people, um, you know, uh, um, in, in that spirit of praise and worshiping the one true God? Or is it putting people in that spirit of praise to worship the minister? OK, now most of us can see that example, but can you see it play out in your relationship? Uh oh. Uh oh, that one that you might be married to who is not necessarily a believer. Or that one who is a believer, but oh, well, I got caught up in some stuff, so I'm not much into believing. Or that one who says, yes, I'm sold out for God. But then you look around and see something's a little bit shady, little bit uh, not right. OK. Come on. Are you going to fight for truth, even if it means it's going to cost you your marriage? Are you willing to fight for truth, even if it means that you're going to have to move out of your little comfortable spot that you done already paid off for some of you all? Are you going to fight for truth if it means that you're going to have to stand up and march? And that means you might miss some days off of work or you might come back and you won't have a job. Are you willing to fight for truth? Are you willing to sit down and break bread with someone who doesn't necessarily like you, but you guys are happen to be on the same team? Are you willing to approach someone who you would consider unapproachable, but God says you can approach? You see, this is real. We are in times, the last times, where, what does the Bible say? Scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. When do we speak up? When do we say enough is enough? I'm not going to keep going through these issues with you. I'm not going to continue to accept what you are telling me. You tell lies, okay? I'm not going to go along with the programming. When? You see? You got some folks that you need to really do something like that. That example I just gave you, you really are going to have to sit down and say, I am so done. You are not going to come in here and tell me that you were somewhere where I know full well you weren't. 
Your mission might have to be like that. Something as simple as dealing with somebody on the home front. Somebody else's mission may be a little bit more complex where we got to organize. I told you all in messages a while back about that season that was coming up where there was going to be some organizing. And I'm telling you that this time that we're in is a spiritual war. Some of you all have heard it. Spiritual warfare, you know, uh, God and dev uh, God versus devil, devil versus God, light versus darkness, darkness versus light. We in it. We've been in it for a while now. Satan's people are in some of the most powerful positions in the land. But where is God's people? A lot of us, we're in stealth mode right now. Some of us are standing down until we get our orders. Others are willing to throw up everything and anyone to do what it is that God wants us to do. We will die for the cause. Some have even had their families threatened because of how powerful they are in various industries. And guess what they said? Do what you have to because I'm not selling out. And besides, my family's going to heaven. That is how dedicated some of these people are to whatever mission God has called them on. I don't know what your mission is, but I know that you're going to need to have a passion of fire and you may even need some finances and some, you know, special groups and everything else. But whatever it is that you're called to do, just make sure that it is not taking the people away from God. There's a lot of organizations that the reason why they're not successful is because they don't have a God stamp of approval anywhere on it. God's not even mentioned. But yet they want favor. They want to be able to sit at the table of different organization heads and so forth. They want to have special favor to be able to break bread with kings and queens. But you don't even acknowledge God. You see? Uh, out with pray we don't have time to pray let's get out here and just hold up the sign what then I don't need to be a part of your group Jesus thank you Lord verse 19 says these are the men who divide you I thought we were you know unified uh uh God wasn't in that see that's why there was all the quarreling. That's why they couldn't get anything organized. That's why it wasn't much of a success. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. My natural instinct says that we need to go out here and we need to do this and we need to do that. But what does God say? Oh, here we go. You one of them. You see? That person doesn't have the spirit. They're one of them. They don't have the spirit. They're not praying. They're not fasting. They're not calling people to fast. They're not saying that we need to turn to God on what's our next move. Martin Luther King, must I remind some people? He may have had all sorts of little connections and did some things that oh, we don't really like. But the truth of the matter is, though, the man still had God, though. Hmm. Something to think about. Verse 20, but you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Who told you that you can't speak in tongues any longer? Uh-uh. If you got that gift and you know you got that gift, hey, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Utilize what you have. Pray for your spirit. Pray in the spirit. Verse 21, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. We're talking about life after death. We're talking about our spirits being with the Father, not in darkness. 
Thank you, Jesus. See me. She under the wall. She gets. We need your mercy right now, Lord Jesus. For some folks did something that they weren't supposed to be doing. That some folks got involved in some matters they that they shouldn't. While other folks are called to do some things, but they have yet to do anything. Jesus, see she under the wall. She gets. Move upon their spirits right now. And walk with a boldness when that time comes, when it's time for you to fight the good fight, when it's time for you to move because God said move, not because people told you to, but because God said. Verse 22, be merciful to those who doubt. Verse 23, snatch others from the fire and save them to others. Show mercy. Right. Right now we are in a time where God's mercy, we need it like yesterday. Be merciful to those who doubt. They doubt. They don't really know. They don't really bother to do any research or study or pray or anything. Be merciful, Lord, to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire. There's some folks that's about to go. They're about to leave this earth. They think they're going to heaven. They're not going to heaven. They're going to hell. Snatch. Snatch others from the fire and save them to others. Show mercy. Mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stains by corrupted flesh. Corruption is everywhere, isn't it? And you've got to take all of what you know, all of what you found out, heard through the grapevine, whatever, over to the Lord. Fear is not going to do anything but put some good Christians on their back, backs, okay? We don't need fear. We don't need worry. Oh, I'm so worried. What's worry going to do? Oh, I'm so stressed. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. What's that going to do? God knows the future. And as far as we're concerned, most of us, we're not even going to be affected. It's going to be business as usual. Verse 24, to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Verse 25, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. If you got your Bible out, let's reread that again. The, the uh, doxology. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the audience that Jude uh, had wrote to, they were vulnerable to heresies. Okay. And they were tempted toward immoral living. And some of you all, that has, that's what has taken place. You see, you've been tempted. This righteous life, uh, I don't really know about all this. I don't think I'm cut for it. There was a woman who I was spending some time ministering to, you know, and I started feeling very passionate. I mean, I started feeling her pains, her ups, her downs. And I said, Lord, you know, I mean, this is a lot. And I went to the Lord and I asked him to take some of that from me. OK, because it was getting to a point where I would come to her and just tell her what she did. You know, <laughs> and she, her mouth would drop. Her eyes would be open. How'd you know? How'd you know? And I said, oh, I don't want that, Lord. I don't want to be that close to her like that. And, but I'll tell you, though, that I saw, though, God's mercy with her time and time again, despite her sinful lifestyle. And I couldn't help but draw nearer to the Lord because of what he was doing with her. And Lord knows I was praying for her. And I'm telling you. That when we turn to God, when he could have destroyed us, he didn't. And I mean, I prayed for all sorts of things concerning this woman. I prayed that while she's out there messing around with this one, that one, that she didn't get pregnant, that she didn't have a disease. I prayed in Jesus mighty name that the Lord would just cover her and protect her. I asked that the Lord would intervene and give her some wisdom. And one day she came and she said, I went to the church and I, you know, rejoiced with her. And then another time she came and she said, look at this. And I said, what's that? She said, that's holy water. Water. She says, and I'm going to put it on my chair and on my desk. And I said, well, hallelujah and praise the Lord. And then she said, look at this and it was a scripture and I said wow you know and then lo and behold if a man didn't show up a man that had his share of demons a man who said he was a believer but he didn't act like one and so he lured her away 
and she got a, a bit disgruntled, a bit disappointed. And I was praying that he would be getting right with the Lord and everything else and to no avail. And so she went back into sinful living again. Okay. And I took it personal. And the Lord told me not to. We're going to win some and we're going to lose some. But God. Because it's not really about that, is it? It's about God. It'll feel like that, though. That you lost someone. But God sets everything up in his time. The time is to drop the word into the spirit. And then whatever else God wants to do with them, he will make sure that it happens. But we're not to worry. We're to just dust our feet off and move on to the next house. Move on to the next person to talk to. Okay? We cannot stay where folks don't want to be saved. We can't stay preaching words to people whose ears are itchy for other messages that have less God and more I, I stuff. We just keep on fighting this battle. We keep on fighting for God's truth. God's truth is in his word. Even if they pull out some scriptures, which they have in some of these Bibles, and even when they change things around, that's why we got the Holy Spirit. We just let the Holy Spirit guide us like I did today. I let the Holy Spirit guide me to Jude. I didn't do it in my own strength. And just like I did with the other messages. I'm not doing it in my own strength. I'm allowing God to intervene. I said, use me. That was my prayer years ago. And God's been using me ever since. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's other apostles that warned about false teachers. You can go to Acts 20 and 29. You can also go to 1 Timothy 4 verses 1 and 2. And you can preach these messages yourself. For those of you all who've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7 for over a year now. You can take these messages and apply the scriptures. Okay. And share them with people in your network. Uh, Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 5 is another place. Uh, you can also go to Second Peter chapter two verses one through three, and Second uh, John verse seven. There's just no way we would have been able to get through all of those scriptures. Um, verse twenty. I wanted to clarify, um, based on my life application study Bible, to pray in the Holy Spirit means to pray in the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. Okay, He prays for us. Uh, he also opens our minds to Jesus, and He teaches us about Him. And there's scripture references for all three of those. You can go to Romans 8, 26 and 27 um, about the Holy Spirit praying for us. You can also go uh, over to John 14, 26 uh, about the Holy Spirit opening up our minds to Jesus because he does that. And then um, teaching us about him. That's John 15, 26. So the Holy Spirit does have function in the Holy Trinity. I know once again, that's been attacked too. Well, I don't believe in the Trinity and all that. And, you know. Look, Father, Son, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit came into being because Jesus in the flesh no longer walking the earth. He ascended up into heaven, but he did not leave us without a gift. That's the Holy Spirit. God, our Father, Yahweh, hallelujah. I pray to Yahweh. I pray to God and I ask him for the wisdom and so forth. So when you see all of these different audios and videos, I, I have to say the glory be to God because I asked him. OK, I didn't ask the money God that was in a lot of them little churches. OK, that the ministers was preaching about and all that, trying to get more money from the congregation. I didn't pray to him. I didn't pray to the mother gods that were about pride and, and you know, um, fame and, and power and all that. Didn't pray to them gods. And I didn't pray to the gods of uh, wayward family members and so forth. No, mm -mm. I went to the creator of this universe. And that's where he has just shown himself strong in my life. And I thank him every day in Jesus mighty name. Um, what else? 
What else is it that I need for you to know before we close this out? Okay, let's go back to verse 21. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. What that means is to live close to God, okay? And his people, not listening to false teachers who would try to pull you away from him. So if a person, I don't care what their title is or who or what they have done for you and all that. Forget all of that. We've got to stop holding people to all of this. Well, he did this and she did that. And that's my mom and that's my dad. And stop all of that. Let's just look at it for what it really is. If this person or group is pulling you away from God and making it about them, everything's about them. You call me, you come around me, you, you know, report to us, you do this for us, um, and, and God is, is where's, where's God in all this? Where's the studying? Where's the, okay, we're, there's a problem. If you're not receiving spiritual gifts and spiritual nourishment and, you know, being um, free of toxic people, places and things and all that, there's a problem. If I'm taking you back to God, why is it then that you still grappling with all these things? Why is that? Because somewhere in your life, you are still drawn to that person place or thing you're making that the focal point and you're not making God the focal point it's real easy my eyes I take them off of all the issues all the dramas all the people and stuff and I put my eyes on God how do I find out what it is that God wants me to do how do I want to or how do I get a personal relationship I open up my scriptures okay I spend the needed time I don't fill up my quiet time with television. I don't fill up my quiet time with radio. I don't fill up my quiet time with everybody and everything. You see what I mean? Some people, they got the hobbies. They got the, um, oh, they got the television. They got the radio. They got the children. They got all this stuff and they never seem to make time. Even if that means that you got to set your alarm for two o'clock in the morning for a quick time with the Lord, then do that then. If you claim you don't have any time during the day. I beg to differ. People can find time. They can find time. If you say, I got a million dollars and I need you to come over here and pick it up. Okay. Now where you at? What plane I got to catch? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I told you I was going to pay you X amount of dollars over a four day period. Um, you know what? I think it's time for my vacation. Oh, really? You got time. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So you have time to pray in the Holy Spirit. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. You have time to walk close with the Lord, to listen closely to him and obey. You have that time. But listening to them false teachers hmm, and they're pulling you away from him. No wonder some folks don't get blessed. Jesus. Now, 22 and 23. Where we talked about be merciful to those who doubt, snatch others from the fire and save them. Uh, now, effective witnessing, right? If you are under the right teacher, folks are going to get saved. They're going to get saved. And God's judgment won't fall on certain people, right? Because you'll say, wait, I thought God was going to do something. Woo. I guess he's not. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, right? OK, we don't want to be like Jonah and say, mm, God, you had me tell these people this and nothing happened. Oh, send fire on them. No, no. God's mercy, his judgment and so forth. OK, look, we're, we're just grateful that they're saved. Thank you, Jesus. We witness to some through our compassion and kindness to others. We witness as if we were snatching them from the eternal fire. To hate even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh means that we are able to hate the sin. But we must witness to and love the sinner, according to my study Bible. Unbelievers, no matter how successful they seem by worldly standards, listen closely, those of you all. How come all those sinful celebrities are always getting all the attention of fame and stuff? I guess I'm going to have to sell out in order to get anything because I don't see God doing anything. Okay, wait, hold up, listen up. Unbelievers, no matter how successful they seem by worldly standards, are lost and in need of salvation. We should not take witnessing lightly. It is a matter of life and death. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. 
In trying to find common ground with those to whom we witness, we must be careful not to fall into the quicksand of compromise when reaching out to others. We must be sure that our own footing is safe and secure. Be careful not to become so much like non-Christians that no one can tell who you are or what you believe. Influence them for Christ. Don't allow them to influence you to sin. And I will close the message out with that. Don't allow them to influence you to sin because that's what they're going to do. They heard Christ. Er, I'm not interested. But a hey, there's a party. There's, you know, a place that we can hang out. You know, we could do this. We could do that. They're going to influence you to sin. Meanwhile, you're trying to tell them about Christ and about, you know, love and peace and patience and whatever else that God puts on your heart. We are not to follow in their footsteps. They are not the leaders. Those that are sinful, those are those that are ungodly, those that are rebellious, those that like to take scripture and mix it all up and put their spin on it. We don't follow after them. We can talk to them, but we cannot have them in our close personal so social circles. Ungodly folks should not be in your close social circle. You should not be taking advice from them. Okay. They are wayward in the faith. A lot of them have turned away from God because they're disappointed. Okay. We're not talking about people who just don't know God. We're talking about people who they know God. They're just not into God. They don't think it's cool. They don't think it's fun. They don't think anything about walking with, you know, Christ. Huh? What? I don't even understand that. And then if they want to know something, then we share the word. If they don't want to know anything, we don't put pressure on them. We just pray for them when we have the time. And I'm going to take the time out right now to pray for those of you all who you sense that you've been falling into some false doctrines, some false teachers, you know, focus on money, fame, power, sex, you name it. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that you will not continue to follow after these wayward teachers, these lost teachers, these apostate teachers, that God will give you the strength. He will give you the knowledge. He will give you the wisdom. He will just give you the correct teaching that you need so that you can be a good witness for Christ. I pray in Jesus mighty name that you will be like Christ and that you will use those quiet times during the day as opportunities to be in Christ's presence, allowing him to free you from whatever binds you mentally, physically, and spiritually to give you the comfort that you need when you are sad, when you are angry, when you are depressed. I pray these things in Jesus mighty name. So I thank you for listening. Those of you all who are just sold out for Christ, hallelujah, and praise the Lord. Keep on fighting, okay? Know your Bible so that you don't get caught up in all sorts of doctrinal errors, you know, or preaching something that's incorrect. It's very easy for any of us to fall into something and go, oh, I thought that was God. And God's like, I didn't even approve that. I had nothing to do with that. And why are you following after him? Don't you know that he has a history? I also urge that you all research these ministers before you go sending money out there. OK, I also suggest that you pray and you ask the Lord to lead you. OK, there's a lot going on. A lot going on in kingdom business. Thank you so much as always for taking the time out to listen to God be the glory. Please do check the description box for anything that may be of interest. And also you have been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Please subscribe today. And if you feel so moved to give, we welcome donations. Thank you and may God richly bless you.